show you what to do with all of it. <laughs> right, this guy. I'm sure you have seen all of leaves sold in various uh, grocery stores and you might have wondered what on earth are you going to do with it. Right, so today I'm going to show how I use it. I have two leaves here. Normally I just buy one, but for some reason, I guess because of wanting to do this video, I kind of went overboard. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. So, uh, first I'm going to just peel the olive. I will collect all the pieces into one bowl and then add them to my uh, compost pile because I like to compost, make my own compost because I find it it's the best soil, you can't really buy it or if you buy it, it costs like $25 a pound, the really good stuff which is ridiculous on the other hand, if you make it yourself, you can pretty much make it limitless amounts with almost no money okay. I think I'm Maybe you should make a video about how to make your own compost because um, when I first started uh, doing my compost uh, I was kind of distraught and gave up the first year and then I realized that it doesn't really matter what you put inside a composter at the end it all turns into soil <laughs> like when you're uh, buy like a book about composting then they are very like specific uh, you have to put that many greens and that many browns and yada 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 don't put that, put that, yada and so on and reality is that it doesn't matter what you put in it it's all going to turn into uh, soil and only difference is uh, how fast so okay so I have the first olive leaf uh, peeled and you see it's kind of yucky, right? So the main thing what you want to do about olive is that you want to get rid of this yucky slimy thingy. I'm going to put them in this container and then just wash this yuckiness off, right? So uh, while I'm going to peel the next leaf, I'm just going to let this uh, be uh, in a cold water. Just wait. Oh, it's so slimy. So slime is the stuff that has, uh, the slime of aloe has uh, this uh, icky, bitter uh, taste. It's also, I think, uh, can cause diarrhea. I'm not sure. I have never had an issue with it. But uh, basically, you don't really want to eat that slime. But luckily, you can wash all of that stuff off. And what you're left is just a bunch of pieces of aloe that have absolutely no taste whatsoever. And that's basically the key, is that aloe itself, after you wash it properly, uh, does not have any taste, meaning that you can just add it to different uh, things. And well, the texture is really slimy, right? Like, oh, so that's kind of indicates that you don't really want to put it to any kind of food because it's kind of <laughs> when you just get this kind of chunk into your mouth, it's probably not the, uh, pleasant, it's kind of weird. What on earth are you eating? So I find the best way uh, to deal with aloe is uh, to blend it into smoothies. Uh, today, surprise, surprise, I'm going to do my breakfast smoothie, one of my favorite one. Uh, this one actually even my daughter drinks. It's made out of pineapple, papaya, aloe, uh, and uh, almond milk, or basically not milk, whatever you happen to have. But these ingredients just are what I happen to have. You can always change them however you want. So basically, you can add the aloe into any smoothie, it just disappears into it. It gets blended, it doesn't have any taste, yet you get all the good 
of nutrients that the aloe has to offer. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering if I still have hair, like why am I wearing this turban? No, it's because um, I didn't wash my hair last night and then in the morning I realized that I really should wash my hair. So I basically washed my hair late in the morning. Uh, and I didn't want the hair to be dripping all over the place while I do the video. Right, so this is where I put the slimy, slimy pieces and I'm going to just try to wash them as well as I can and then put the wash pieces into a clean bowl and then you can just refrigerate the olive pieces. Uh, well, I have never tried to uh, refrigerate olive pieces more than a week, so I'm sure it will go bad at some point, it's just I don't really know what the exact best before would be but usually um, I get it eaten in one week of course this time I have double the size of olive so you, usually I have one uh, leaf of olive and that lasts me a week I guess not because I have two olive leaves I have to eat twice as much olive this week So if you're not sure, you can taste it. If it's still bitter, it means you still have a bunch of slime around it. So you really don't want that bitter to taste. So now I'm basically ready uh, to start making a smoothie. As I said, I'm going to use in it papaya and olive and pineapple. But pineapple I'm going to use in a frozen state. So here I already have a pineapple ready, cut into pieces and frozen from previous time. But here I'm just going to show you what I would do normally with a pineapple when I buy it. So with a, a pineapple you can usually get it for just a few dollars. Actually one time sprouts at a sale Pineapple was one dollar piece. They were absolutely fantastic pineapples. They had nothing wrong with them. And I bought 10 pineapples. Uh, I've uh, cut half of them into tiny pieces and refrigerated them and had frozen pineapple for a very uh, long period. And the other half, uh, I also cut into small pieces but de dehydrated because I happen to have a dehydrator. And so basically you can make uh, dried fruit and dried stuff with it. Just going to quickly cut the pineapple into pieces. Because I recently purchased this pineapple, it's starting to already get a little bit too ripe. And I'm just using this chance to take care of the pineapple and put it into freezer. So I like to use uh, frozen pineapple. You can also use fresh pineapple. Uh, nothing wrong with that. And this, usually I just make two, even though there's more room for it, for the more pineapple, I'm going to just keep it as it is because then it's just easier to get it out. Next time I'm going to use it. I usually do not buy frozen fruit 
like fruit that is already frozen in bags. Because I don't know how long it has been in this bag. Have they, you know, I don't know the quality. Sometimes uh, things get kind of defrosted and then frozen again in store conditions and so on. So this is kind of very nice, high quality, fresh stuff for smoothie. Right, and then I'm just going to put it, shove it into my freezer. <clears throat> so uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to add also one banana that is really, really ripe. This means it's very sweet. Also, I'm going to just make it into pieces, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in a freezer because sometimes in some smoothies I like to use banana instead. I didn't bother even cut it. So let's get to our today smoothie. I have here a smoothie uh, Plus, I'm going to use the frozen banana, uh, frozen pineapples I have. They already started to defrost a little bit. also either one piece of kale a little bit of spinach or something not a lot but a little bit so that the color would turn green the color of the smoothie yet the taste wouldn't really suffer okay. so this is my composting pile and this is already getting so big so you see just doing a little bit of smoothie and stuff already creates so much leftovers So I highly recommend composting it. If you have a garden, small composters, uh, high quality, relatively high quality composter you can get for $90. I will show you one, uh, one of mine that I purchased for $90. That does excellent job. Uh, I have a total of three composters. I think I need to put more pineapples. So let me see if I have more frozen pineapples somewhere like hidden. Oh, I want another bag. And four. In there. of all line here. Okay. The leftover all oil goes in a refrigerator and now I just add milk. So I prefer to use nut milks. Milk sometimes Cow milk it has its own issue, so I just I think I don't wanna add too much. Let's see. So there's a lot of space down here, so I'm just making room <laughs> with that. Uh, so you wanna really add the milk as a last thing, as you notice, otherwise it's going to be difficult. Now, 
prepare yourself for a very horrible noise. we have so this is quite sweet uh, smoothie of course you can add things the way you want uh, right like I would really add a green leaf here but at the moment I just didn't have one around with me um, but uh, it's really a good wake-up smoothie it has a lot of nutrition you still have the fiber uh, in it, it plainly the whole thing, but a fiber that is in the fruit, it's not like a fruit juice. You didn't separate the fiber, the fiber is still here. Uh, it has uh, fruit sugars to wake you up. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take this composting material to, co to the composter. And on the way out, we're passing through that laundry room. That also happens to be my seedling growing room. So here we have cucumbers, cantaloupe up, a lot of different flowers up already. Right. And outside we are greeted by Bosso. Bosso hopes to get something nummy. Right, so you see, today is a nice day. Here we have one composter, on the back there I have another old composter that my neighbor gave when she moved away. She knew I would appreciate it. And this is a $90 composter that I was talking about. It has two compartments and it just works very well. So, where are you going? So, this is the backyard. The Bosu loves to run around. She gets a lot of exercise. Yeah. You get a lot of exercise, don't you? <laughs> I love having breakfast outside if possible. Just having my coffee outside, my porridge, or now it's smoothie kind of um, helps uh, in a waking up process. I think that the natural light, the fresh air. Thank you for watching. Bye!